Everyone always wants to see the soft tail builds. Behind me, we have a beast, a little different bike. It is a slim that is no longer a slim. And we're gonna go over what we did, why, but it was the customer's creation and we made it happen exactly how we wanted it. All right, let's take it for a ride, show a little video of what it's doing. Bike's headed out of here, customer's house, gave us permission to ride it. 147 cubic inch stroker with a four and a half inch pistons. What's so unique about this is it was a slim and they come stock with a 130 front and a 150 rear while well, having 170 plus horsepower and real close to 170 pounds of torque there's no way a 150 is going to hold it so on the rear end it's got a bst with a brand new 180 setup and to fit the wider tire underneath the fender we have a heartland 200 kit which is their fender their struts and their seat and that's the way we're able to tuck this 180 under the rear of the bike right now looking at her the fender is really far away from the rear end or the tire. Once you sit on the bike and you preload it, the bike kind of sits where you'd like her to be and how you want the look to be. So it's a real cool look, low to the ground. This isn't an everyday California corner valley ripper, but if you want to cruise around town, hit some straightaway, some nice slow twisties, it rips. So at the end of this or at the beginning of this, you're going to see us kind of take it down some back roads and how she runs, and she's a beast. So BST's front and rear, you got Galfer brakes, front and rear with stock calipers. That is something the customer might address later, but it does have a chain conversion kit on it with the Baker grudge box. And you will notice this is burned stainless steel, new Lowrider X exhaust. Um, we've gone over it multiple times. Mike will do a quick overview of why this pipe's on the bike, how it works with the extra volume of air this 147's pushing out. This build, we didn't go for top horsepower. It's a bike without a front fairing. You're not gonna be in it till 7,000 RPMs. You're gonna be ripping from three to, to really six. And that's what we focus on this bike. 35 to 65 is kind of, where this bike is really suited to run. And cruising at 23, 2400 RPMs, bike does it with ease. <laughs> Hello? My cats, grass your fingers. Hello? The collector of power. Check this out. Don't let appearance fool you. This is a large motor, it's a 147 cubic inch. <laughs> it has the biggest exhaust we had available at the time, but we just, we did some math. And math is hard. But our math came up with it's not quite big enough for the amount of cubic inches we're going to put on this. So Burns, being the badass guy as they are, custom made us a pipe. Look at this collector. Oh, look at the merge difference between the two. You can fit that over that if you want. So we're going to swap this out and then we're going to dyno tune it and see because we're going to have enough. We have enough displacement to make up for any bottom end loss we'll have by running such a large setup according to the math. Let's get into some technicals. So this pipe comes out of the head at one and three fourths of an inch, goes into the anti-reversion chamber, comes out here at one and seven eighths, briefly into two, into a two and a half inch merge collector, into, our muff, into the muffler, which you just saw in this, this picture right here. This one comes out at one and seven eighths, immediately goes to two, then two and an eighth, two and a quarter, into this massive three inch collector and into the muffler which you see right here. So the reason we're able to run such large pipes is because we're gonna have enough air movement through the displacement of the engine to take up for what would typically be a dead bottom end. So the 147 is a four and a half inch piston and it's got the S and S flywheel that strokes. So it's a 4.625 stroker flywheel. SNS normally does that with their shorter rod. We went with the conventional 8.015 Carrillo rod in it. So since it's a stroke, an extra stroke, with the Carrillo rod, we had to take the cylinders 
and make them a little bit taller, 1 16th of an inch taller to make up for that rod. And we kept the piston pin in the same exact spot you'd have it in a 143 application. So we did that with a taller cylinder. There's some custom other things we had to do to make sure that the push rod tubes are working, the push rods are correct, and everything else with the motor. So just like all the other big cubic inches, when we're over 135 cubic inch or larger, a pair of MHP Monster Heads by Frankenstein Engine Dynamics just for us. They have the proprietary square pour intake and they are running the Star Racing Plus 2.5 overstock millimeter valves. They're running PSI springs, titanium retainers, and billet locks. You have the 70 millimeter MHP monster intake manifold with an HPI incorporated throttle body. And this is HPI's air cleaner as well. We worked with those guys. They have our badging on it. They're great to work with. They do some really, really nice stuff out of their shop. The cam is a 610 lift cam. It is our 610. This one is a prototype cam just for this build. Now suspension on this guy. We have the Owens rear shock. It has your compression on the outside of the bike so it's easy to get to, but it is a fully adjustable shock right from Owens. If we get this seat off, look at that. Old school, I haven't seen one of those in a while. I'm just glad it kept me on the bike when we were riding it, but it works really well. So the Owens under the seat, you have your preload right here. Your rebound is set right there. We turn this guy and that's how we're adjusting the rebound. On the very bottom of the shock, there is an adjustment just like everything else Owens typically puts out is you have a little adjustment there for total length. And then of course, it's really easy to get to. Your compression's right on the side. I think you're supposed to lick it before you stick it, right? That's how these work. Yeah. The front end has a Legend cartridge kit in the front end of this guy. The, the Legends are nice. They're set up for aggressive riding. This bike is set up to be ridden aggressive. It's not fully adjustable like a GP front, but it's right in, it's a little bit above the middle. Instead of being the middle between normal riding and performance, Legend is setting theirs up a little more on the performance side. And that's where this guy is set up and it handles great. I mean, she's low, the rims are light on her. Even without the radial brake, she stops easy because of the carbon fiber rims. Other side is a chain drive conversion. We kept the stock ratio. We really didn't go over or under on the ratio on the final drive because it's already got the Baker transmission in it where the Baker's gearing is higher than a stock Harley transmission. So since it had that, we replicated the stock ratio. And our favorite lifters are in this bad boy. It's got a pair of feeling short travel race lifters. We put those lifters in all of our high performance builds. Anything that is a 131, that's one of our custom packages on up, get a feeling race lifter. They do a great job with those lifters. Uh, they're made by Johnson and it's the best lifter you can pretty much put in your Harley Davidson.